It's been week after week of grim COVID anniversaries from the first U.S. death to the first emergency declarations. And today marks exactly one year since the World Health Organization declared a global pandemic. Back then, we were just starting to transition into lockdowns, trying to figure out how to keep ourselves and our families safe. Now we're slowly starting to transition back out into the world in varying degrees. But for many, those same feelings of uncertainty and anxiety remain even for the fully vaccinated who just got updated guidance from the CDC. There are a lot of questions about what they're willing to do and when. As my next guest wrote in a new Washington Post op-ed, month after month we have been yearning to be done with enforced distancing, social isolation, and life in a more virtual reality. Now that the moment has arrived as millions of Americans have been vaccinated and millions more will soon roll up their sleeves for it, the prospect is oddly disconcerting. I'm joined by D.C. physician and Bloomberg New Voices fellow, Dr. Lucy McBride. Dr. McBride, it's good to meet you. Thanks for being here. Delighted to be here. Thanks for having me. You wrote in your piece you were fully vaccinated, but, quote, your brain was buzzing with anxiety and ambivalence. So is mine. Why? Here's the thing. We have been through what I would call a collective trauma for the last 12 months. Our lives have been upended. Our routines have been disrupted. Our kids have been out of school. We haven't been able to work, worship, love, play, and exist as we normally do. And so while it is wonderful to think about reentry, and while the vaccines are the sure path towards a better future, it's natural to have feelings of ambivalence and anxiety upon another transition. It's a bit of emotional whiplash. But why, for those of us who actually believe in science, which sadly is a far smaller number than it should be in this country, I'm among them, by the way, why isn't reason enough? Why, when I read the CDC guidelines from, I think it was two days ago, and listen to what Dr. Fauci says, why isn't that enough for me to coax me out of my reluctance, for lack of a better expression? It's a great question, and it's exactly what I've been writing about for a year now in my COVID-19 newsletter, is that we are more than just rational thoughts, and we have more than just rational thoughts. We have emotional lives that are independent of our rational thoughts. And in fact, the pandemic has laid bare the critical importance of addressing mental health and assessing our daily thoughts, yeah. feelings, and behaviors. So even my most educated fact following patients and I'm trying to cultivate, you know, and, and, and generate facts out to the general public, people are anxious. They know the facts, yet they are trained and we have been conditioned to be afraid of this potentially lethal virus. It's a hard adjustment to make, even though we know the facts. You know, there was another uh, angle on this that was compelling to me today. It was a piece in the Boston Globe by a guy by the name of Andy Rosen, who said one of the reasons for this hesitancy, for lack of a better expression, about reentry, is that it's not really ever going to be formally over. I mean, we all want a firm endpoint to a lot of things to allow us to sort of permit ourselves to move forward. And while it may be, quote, over in individual cases like yours, you're two shots in, I'm one shot in, it's not collectively over. That was a compelling point to me. Is it to you? It is in a sense that, you know, it's not going to be an on off switch. You know, Fauci isn't gonna, is not going to blow a whistle and say, all right, ready, set, go. Right. It's going an, an, to be an on ramp. You know, as the vaccine is distributed and put into mo more arms, we will slowly and gradually achieve herd immunity. But here's what I'm telling my patients every day. Risk is everywhere. Risk has always been everywhere. And whether you knew it or not, you were making small risk assessments every day when you left your house. I mean, if you think about the flu season, for example, we didn't close schools, we didn't mask up and shut, mm -hmm. shut, shut down our communities. Maybe we should and do more risk mitigation, I think we should, next flu season. But what I'm saying is that when we have three vaccines currently available that basically take death and severe disease off the table, we can expect that it's going to be pretty darn normal once we achieve herd immunity. You know, you also had, uh, when I read a piece like yours, I'm always nervous at the end they're going to leave us hanging and not give us uh, 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 tips for getting out of whatever mess that they're describing. You satisfied me. You did have tips for reentry. Talk a little bit about what you think people can do who are on this edge that a lot of us are on. 
Sure. And, you know, we treat patients and I, and I, and I talk to myself in this very same way that know that it's normal to have anxiety about change. So naming it is crucial. Name that we've been through a trauma, name that this is a transition and it's naturally hard. Normalize it. Be kind to yourself. If you have had social anxiety that has been quieted during the pandemic, as you sit on the couch on Saturday night, instead of going out, know that it's going to be hard to go to a cocktail party off the bat. Take it slow. Go out with a friend or two the first time. And then, you know, ask for help. Ask for, you know, help from your friends, your family. Talk about your feelings. Normalize it. Name it. Navigate it. Talk to your doctor about how you're feeling. That is our job, is to help people not just with their cholesterol and their weight and their blood pressure, but about how they feel in general. Exercise, getting in nature, eating healthy, mm. prioritizing sleep. These are all things that we recommend, you know, to patients, but also I try to recommend to myself to get through the day. By the way, there's a permanent imprint of my body on the couch in my living room, just so you yeah. understand where I'm, uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> coming from. But, you know, one, one additional thing you had your, on your list, if you didn't call them tips, I'm calling them tips, was uh, pay attention to the facts. And it sort of relates back to what we were talking a couple of minutes ago about your intellect and your emotion. But what makes it even harder here, I think, is even if you're able to put emotion aside, you have a CDC set of guidelines on Monday saying nothing about it's okay to travel. And you have a lot of people who have your kinds of degrees who deeply respect people like Rochelle Walensky at the CDC who say they didn't really go far enough. You should feel free to travel if you're fully vaccinated. So it seems to me that it's incumbent on people like you and your colleagues to get your messaging as crystal clear and laser-like focused as is humanly possible to help us emerge. I'm right, yes? You're you're 100% right. And that's exactly why I've been writing a COVID newsletter for a year and why I'm here right now. Facts and science are not negotiable. Science is not negotiable. It's science. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm a doctor. It's not informed by politics or, or emotion. The messaging around it, though, can be driven by politics and opinion, of course. And so one of the things that's been generating a lot of anxiety in patients and, you know, my friends and family throughout the pandemic, I'm sure I'm, I'm not alone when I say this, is the myriad inputs media-wise and, and all the fire hydrant of information and differences in opinion about the science and the facts. So one of the things that I recommend to patients to quell anxiety and to quiet fear is to find experts that you trust. Find people who are following the facts and following the science and who are unbiased. You're safe that way. And then you can turn off your phone and go to sleep and sleep hopefully <laughs> a little bit better. On that note, I'm subscribing to your newsletter tonight, Doctor. It's I good to meet you. Thanks for it. your time. Thanks for <laughs> having me. Pleasure. You can find her newsletter at LucyMcBride.com.